Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. Krusty Train Guy 6 here, the railroad photograph collector. And today, I thought I'd do a short unboxing video of a historic railroad image that I recently received in the mail. So, as you can tell by the title of this video, this image is of Washington and Old Dominion Railroad, steeple cab number 51. So basically, how I'm going to be formatting these videos is I start off with the, of course, the unboxing of the actual parcel. This includes looking over the quality of it and other physical characteristics such as information included on the back. After this, I'm going to scan the image off camera and then show you the scanned image and I'll voice over some history about the locomotive as well as the railway it operated on. Um, I'll also add some details and uh, other interesting facts about whatever is in the image. Um, at the end of the video, I'm going to add a little trivia question. And uh, if you know the answer to the question, or you think you know the answer, or even if you want to take a wild guess, then I invite you to put it in the comments section below. So without further ado, let's jump right into this. All right, so as you can see, I have my nice gloves on. Let me get my other glove on. My nice archival gloves on. So I'm ready to open up this parcel without damaging the image inside. As you can see, it's just a regular envelope. Make sure I don't damage it too much. I got some small scissors so I don't accidentally cut too much. All right, so let's see what is inside this cardboard. It seems the cardboard was glued down, but the actual photo encasement wasn't, or maybe it was. All right, here we go. Seems like only the right side was. All right, so here's the image in the case. As you can see, it is Washington and Old Dominion Railway number 51. Now, I said railroad in the introduction of this video because in 1937, the Washington and Old Dominion Railway, which was formed in 1911, was reorganized as the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad. So when this photo was taken in March of 1937, as you can see on the back, the Washington and Old Dominion Railway had ceased to exist and it was now the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad. So as you can see by the information on the back, it's nice that we actually got information on the back. Uh, you can see there's the title, of course, Washington and Old Dominion Railway, engine number 51, and the, the location, the date, and the photographer in the bottom right-hand corner. Now it's always great to get the photographer and uh, of course the date because there's without those inf that information, you'd never be able to guess it as accurately as that. Like maybe you could be able to figure out, oh yeah, this looks like 1937, but even then it would be an educated guess. And uh, the photo uh, photographer too. It's hard to figure that out as well. But as you can see, we've got the title, the location, the date, and the photographer. So this is a lesson too. Uh, if you ever print out your photos that you're taking, I, I always, always recommend that you put as much information on it as you can. Um, and thankfully, the photographer of this image did that. So one last look at the front of the Im image. Uh, so you can see, uh, it's pretty nice. Uh, it appears, as I can see it, that there are, there are two outside braced box cars, one lettered for the Wabash. I can't tell the other one. Maybe when I scan it, I'll be able to tell it. But um, yeah, it looks good. So. Now I will scan the image and we'll take a look and try and find some more details. As you can see, the image is now scanned. And uh, first I want to go over a quick overview of the image, including uh, some of the information that was given to me uh, on the opposite side of the photograph. This includes the location, the date, and the photographer. 
So the location of this photograph is Alexandria, Virginia, which was the eastern terminus of the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad. The western terminus of the railroad until into the 1930s was Bluemont, Virginia, uh, and then in the early 1930s when the passenger service dried up, uh, the line was cut back to the town of Purcellville, Virginia, where, we, where it remained until the entire railroad was abandoned in 1968. The date of this image was March of 1937. Now that date is significant because uh, just about a year before this photograph was taken, the Washington and Old Dominion Railway ceased to exist and it became the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad. The exact date for this, which I messed up in the earlier in the video, that's my bad, uh, was April 16th, 1936, not 1937. Although it's still true that this, that this locomotive is still painted in the uh, old Washington and Old Dominion Railway paint scheme, when it should be painted in the, when it will soon be painted in the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad scheme. Now the photographer, Jack Denny, um, I tried to do some research on him, couldn't find any information on him. Uh, unfortunately for a lot of these uh, photographers, they're amateurs and uh, there's not much history about them. Uh, for most of the photographers too that take these photos, uh, they usually had other professions, uh, less noteworthy ones such as maybe somebody was a dentist or a, an orthodontist or I don't know, they worked in retail. Who knows? Uh, so unfortunately, I was unable to find any information about him. But of course, if anybody has any information about him or uh, anything else, uh, please put it in the comments below. Okay. So uh, some other information that uh, I picked up on that was not included in the uh, description on the back is, uh, of course, as I pointed out earlier, uh, the two outside braced boxcars, one uh, pretty obviously labeled for the Wabash, and the other, uh, unfortunately, I have still been, I've still been unable to uh, figure out the uh, reporting marks for that one. Uh, if you can see that, uh, please let me know what it is, because <laughs> I would like to figure that out. Uh, and uh, another uh, detail that I picked up on that I may have mentioned earlier too is the two refrigerated boxcars that uh, possibly used to deliver milk cartons. Uh, due to the fact that there were a lot of creameries located along the WNOD line, um, the uh, milk cans would be put in the reefers and then the reefers would come to the interchange at Alexandria and uh, be sent all over the United States. So that's a possible explanation for those two cars being there. And a last fact, which I thought uh, was kind of interesting, all of these facts were very interesting, of course. Uh, it, number 51, based on the position of the trolley pole, as you can see the trolley pole farther away from the camera, uh, when uh, reference to the one closer to the camera, which is uh, down, uh, this means that the uh, locomotive is either heading uh, towards the uh, photographer, uh, which it would have crossed to the right of um, the viewpoint of the photographer, uh, or it's waiting on uh, siding or maybe even the interchange track in Alexandria, uh, possibly for another, uh, maybe a passenger train, one of the interurban trains to go by, or another freight to pass by. So, not sure, but uh, that's what uh, I picked up from it. So, uh, now on to more interesting topic. Uh, let's take a look at the locomotive history. Washington and Old Dominion Railroad number 51 was built in April of 1921 by Baldwin Westinghouse and assigned Baldwin construction number 54704. It was built as a 50-ton steel cab, steeple cab electric locomotive and was purchased new by the Washington and Old Dominion Railway. The locomotive was utilized on the Washington and Old Dominion Railway on their electric lines, specifically the ones that handled freight, such as the Bluemont Division between Bluemont, Virginia and Alexandria, Virginia, and the Thrift and Connecting Line between Roslyn, Virginia and Bluemont Junction, Virginia. The locomotive, along with twin sister number 50, which was an identical 50-ton steeple cab electric, were utilized on the Washington and Old Dominion Railway into the Great Depression years until the company couldn't handle the financial stress any longer. The WNOD Railway was reorganized as the Washington and Old Dominion Railroad on April 16, 1936. 
both locomotives continued to be utilized for freight service on the line into the WOD Railroad era. Although electric service finally ended in 1943 and the locomotive was sold to the Cornwall Street Railway of Cornwall, Ontario. It was renumbered number 10 and was actually the second locomotive number 10 on the Cornwall Street Railway's roster. The original was scrapped in 1942. The locomotive continued to be used on the Cornwall Street Railway into the 50s, uh, but was scrapped at an unknown date, at least unknown to me. If anybody knows when this locomotive was scrapped precisely, please let me know, because that's some information that I would like to know. As an added bit of extra information, uh, I thought it would be interesting to add that number 50, uh, the sister locomotive to number 51, miraculously survives today in revenue freight service. It can be seen on the Iowa Traction Railroad uh, in Cedar Lake, Iowa. So thanks for watching, uh, sorry with the long video, I will shorten these eventually. I hope this was a little interesting to you, I know it was interesting to me. Um, and uh, if you have any other interest or any maybe video suggestions, just say what you want to say, the comments are there for a reason. Uh, and uh, I don't know, if you're interested in this and you want to see more videos like this, uh, you can subscribe, like, whatever, do what you want to do, I'm not going to force you to do anything. So. Let's, uh, I'll bring up the trivia question and uh, call it a day. So here's the trivia question. Uh, these questions usually will not have anything to do with the video. And uh, just, um, it's just mainly for me to see what people know. Uh, I also may do easier and harder questions, but I thought it would be kind of fun to do something like this to get people to uh, comment and, you know, see what people think. So here's the question today. Which historic Class 1 railroad named all of their 484 Northerns after former governors of the state in which it ran? So if you think you know the answer, then uh, I welcome you to put it in the comments. And until next time, Krusty Train Guy 6, over and out.